And then I'm going to share my screen. Actually, I think what I'll do is share the visualizer. Okay. Can you see the screen over here? Yes, I can see it. Okay. So, so I, I think rather than go back through the data sheets and stuff, I, I think what I'll do is I'll just cover the parts I, you know, I'll just kind of, kind of go through everything. So, so there, there are really a handful of instructions you really have to know. Uh, you really have to do know that MOV uh, at move F, and you have to remember with this that this has a register and it has an either a W or a F. And this is, this is a single bit and it tells you whether to leave it in W or F. And a zero is W and a one is F. By default, it's F. So if you don't put that bit there, it'll, it'll populate the, the, the assembler will put a one there for you, uh, which may or may not be what you wanted. Probably wouldn't be in most cases, but then, then we have the MOV W to F. And this also has a register address and it takes W and moves it to the register. This one takes the register and either moves it to W or checks for zero, but doesn't actually move it anywhere. So if you put F, it doesn't move it anywhere because it leaves it in F, but it does set the Z bit if it's zero. And if it's not zero, it clears the Z bit. So you can tell if the location zeroed out. That's really the only other function for it. All right. And then there are a whole bunch of other byte-oriented instructions. When you, when you say, go ahead. Yeah, you're muted. Uh, when you said check the register for zero, whenever like, no, yeah, that yeah. just like a bit test type thing. No, it's not a bit test. It tests all eight bits. Okay. So, and if it, what, so if it finds a zero, what does it what does it do? Does it so, move so it to the? It, it sets the Z bit to a one, in okay. the status register. Oh yeah, okay, that's yeah. I keep forgetting about that column. Yeah, and and that's the only uh, that's the only function of that. Uh, and if any of the bits are set, then it doesn't set the Z bit. It leaves it clear. Okay. okay. All right. So, so the move F instruction, then we have move W to F. That's very straightforward. All it does is take whatever's in W and puts it in the register. Now, remember, uh, these instructions uh, reference and, and all the other, all the other, any instruction that has a register as an address, there's seven bits of the address in the instruction. And there's five bits in the BSR. So that's why we have to set the BSR with the exception of the, of the core registers and the, the, the 16 bytes of common RAM that are mapped to every, block, to every, to every bank. But otherwise, the, the upper five bits have to be set to the right bank. And then the lower seven bits are actually buried in the instruction. And uh, that's true. Anytime you anytime you reference a register and instruction, that's that's how it's operating. And part of that's just because it's I don't know the way they set this family of chips up. Obviously, not all chips are like that, but these are. All right. Then then the another instruction you need to know about is um, decrement f skip on zero. And it's very similar to these. It has a register. And it has either the W or the F bit. In this case, we do we almost always want to leave it in the file register, so we do want to make that a one. And if you forget to put that in there, it will by default put a one, so it'll work okay. You you don't want to move it to W because normally what you're doing is you're decrementing F each time you go through the loop. And finally, when F hits zero, you skip the branch instruction, and you go on to whatever code. It continues, but if if f is not down to zero, then you take the branch and you go back up to the top of the loop and do it all, all again. 
so that's the decrement f step on zero and then so, so do you have to have that with a, a branch instruction or is it just yeah, it, it will just script the very it, next it, instruction no matter what? yeah it would you wouldn't have to put a branch instruction there but it 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 would be unusual to have some reason not to put a branch instruction there um, I guess you could imagine some some code example where that might where it might be useful but 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to have a branch instruction. Anytime you have a bit test instruction or, uh, or, one, or this decrement F skip on zero instruction, any of these skip instructions, uh, you're going to have a branch right after them because that's how that's just how they set it up. Okay. Now, and as far as the, uh, the W and the F instruction, do you, do you just, would you just type in W or could you type in a zero two or you, either you, one? You can type it either way, but it's, it's probably better to type a W or an F. And that way you kind of know what you intended. And the assembler looks at that and puts in the zero or the one. Okay. And as far as uh, the F register, that can, will that be the register that you reference or? Yes. It's it always the register you reference. Yes. It's whatever this register is, that's what the F's about. Because remember, that's only one bit. So there's no way for that F to, to reference any other register than the one that's already in the instruction. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Okay. Then then the other then the other byte oriented things we did was MOV literal or local to W. And so in this one, you don't, re there's no register reference. There's only a, a, an eight bit, eight bit value that's in the instruction. And it takes that eight bit value and puts it into W. That's what the instruction does. So that's a way of loading up a constant into a location. Then, then of course, usually you do this first, and then you then you move W to F to store it wherever you actually wanted it. But there's no way to go there directly, because um, everything has to move through F. I, I'm sorry, everything has to move through the W, the working register. Can't can't go directly to a file register. All right, and then, of course, we also use the bit test instructions. So, so bit bit test, uh, uh, or sorry, the bit the bit well bit test, uh, bit test f skip clear and bit test f skip set. And so we use these to pull on a bit. Or, or, or you could take a branch based on a bit. But normally when you're looking at a single bit, you're looking at an external pin, but you could be looking at a flag uh, from one of the, uh, in one of the, you know, from one of the modules, or you could be doing a lot of things. And then the other, uh, and so, so mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, hang on one second. Oh, you're okay. Uh, so anyway, so the way those instructions, we we have we reference a register, and then we we a th then we have a, a three bit uh, value that specifies the bit. Okay, so so. As opposed to the this thing where you only have a single bit and you just get to pick W or F, here you have three bits and you can pick zero through seven, and that determines which bit is being tested in this register. And then, as you remember, we also have the bit clear F and bit set F instructions, and they do the same thing. They have a register, and then they have a three bit value which is the location of the bit in the 8-bit byte that you want to affect. Let's see, let me slide this up. So those are really all the instructions you need to know. Move F, move W to F, decrement F, skip on zero, 
uh, move literal to W, bit test F skip clear, bit test F skip set, and then bit clear F get set F. You really don't have to know anything else. Uh, For the th the three bit value that specifies, do you, you have to write that in binary, or you can't you can't just write bit four or like? No, you no you can write you can write it as a decimal. Uh, you can and since the hex is a decimal, when you're less than sixteen, and when you're less than ten, the hex and decimal are the same. So since it only goes zero to seven, you can just put zero to seven. Yeah, you don't you don't have to put it. Uh, if you want to write it in binary, you can. You can you can put uh, zero b, and then zero 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 one zero zero for bit say uh, two. But yeah, all right. So now now the th the three things that I wanted you to do, which uh, which I went through before, and let's see if I can find those. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. Okay. So, so, so again, the, the the three things we talked about doing. We talked about doing um, one. We wanna we wanna uh, uh, do the do the uh, do the the assembly language. for loop and then you want to be able to do um, switch switch um, uh, values say an xx and yy using a zz register and again i just use the double variables because you can't use a single z because it's it's a reserved word it stands for the zero bit in the status word so you have to put zz and then uh and then, and then we want to uh, we want to pull on a bit, and we want to configure a register, particularly like a control register for one of the modules or that sort of thing. And um, as part of this, we want to we want to be able to set up uh, a GPIO pin. So that means we want to we want to deal with the tris register, we want to deal with the and cell, and we want to, and then either the port or the latch. Now you have to remember when we deal with the when we deal with the port, we're dealing with we're we're reading the value in. It also works on write, but it has it has a little downside on write, and that is it always does. It always does a uh, a read modify write operation, and if for some reason you do a read modify write when you're actually intending to write out to the latch, uh, and it reads, and for some reason the what's in the latch is not what's showing up on the pin because the pin's shorted or it's being driven high or whatever, uh, then you will, or if there's another pin that's being changed, you will actually. Uh, you, you can actually change of uh, change an output that you didn't intend to change accidentally and there definitely are examples of that happening so so when you want to do output you should use the latch when you want to read the inputs you need you need to use the port and it's kind of important to do that um, remember that by default all the analog select bits that so there's a uh, uh, there's tw 12 of the 20 pins have analog functions. Uh, and then the other eight don't. Of course, two of them are power and ground. So that leaves six pins that, are, that, are, that don't have analog functions. Uh, but, but 12 of the pins do. And if you want to use one of those 12 pins that has an analog function as an input, then you absolutely have to turn off the ANSEL bit and make it a zero because by default, it's set up for the analog function. On the other hand, if you want to use the analog function, then you really probably wouldn't have to configure it, but you should anyway, just in case your code gets pasted in some other code and uh, that other code has already modified that ANSEL bit and now it's off, then your analog input will not work. So if you're trying to do an analog input, but your ANSEL bit's cleared, you're done. It will not read the analog input. So. 
you must, for input, that bit has got to be set correctly. For outputs, you should set it for digital if you're using a digital output, but it, it, won't, it won't be the end of the world if you don't. And then for some things, uh, for some of the interface things like I squared C and SBI, uh, you do need to have you do need to have those uh, those uh, you do need to have the answer bit set correctly. Put it in and solve. So, okay, um, let's see. So those are the things to do, and and so if we look at this, it's pretty simple. For the if we look at the assembly language uh, for loop, we just have to do a couple of things there. All right. The first thing we have to we have to we have to establish we have to define our index. Define an index. So we have to you know so we have to use either a, a defined statement or we have to use a C block or or an equivalent statement. We have to do something to set it up. So somewhere we set k up and let's say we set k up to be uh, zero uh, zero or sorry zero thirty. Okay. So we'll make k in location 30. Um, then what we do is, um, since k is in location 30, uh, now we have to, uh, so we, we do this at the beginning of the program before we write the code. And then somewhere in the setup portion, we have to set up our, our count in index. In this case, we're using k, so we have Let's say we want to do it 20 times, so we have to set k equal to 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 uh, to decimal 20, decimal base 10. Okay, you have to remember if you don't put the zero x, it should be taken as a decimal. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you guys want to come in? Yeah, are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Let me just let me just uh, let's pause this for one second and, and because. Uh, hang on one second. Let me stop the share. Let me just pause this and look that. Okay, and let me share my screen again. And we'll do the one over here. All right. Can y'all see that over here? Yes. Okay. So, so you have to set up the count index. Well, how do you do that? Well. So if we go back to our instructions, uh, the ones that we have, let's see. So we went over these, right? So, the, so obviously what we have to do is we, we have to use the move literal to W, put the eight bit value we wanna save into K into W, and then we have to move W to F with the move W to F instruction. And then we specify K. So that's pretty straightforward. We just do we just do uh, M O well, and, and of course we do have to bank cell our variable. So bank cell K and what that does, that puts into the BSR, the upper five bits of the address of K. Now in this case, K, K is just zero 30. And so the upper five bits are gonna be zero. If you look at zero three zero in hex, that would be one, two, three, four, zero, zero, one, 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 two, three, four. So if we count seven bits in the, in the instruction, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? And then one, two, three, four, five into BSR, the BSR is gonna be zero, and this is just gonna be uh, 30. So that's how that works out. And that's, all the addresses are like that on, the, in, you know, on this chip. Uh, and, and this, in fact, the entire family of chips. Okay, so so we're gonna M O V literal to W, and we'll just put in. Uh, we're gonna count twenty, so we'll put in twenty. And as long as we don't put the zero x in front of it, that should be taken as base ten. Now, if we put zero x, that would be thirty two. So you have to be careful when you're using when you're flipping back and forth between hex and decimal not to get confused. And if you put in you know, if you put in 20 hex you, and you meant 20 decimal, you're going to get the wrong thing. All right. So now, then we just have to move uh, W to F and put K there. None of these, none of these, uh, obviously the bank cell doesn't, but none of these take a second operand. So that's all you have to do. 
So that loads it up. And now to actually run to run the for loop, we have you know some other code in here, and then finally we get to the for loop, or or you could set it up right before the for loop, and we start with a label. So we put in some label, uh, and we'll call this label one, and then we we have some code here, whatever it is. I'll put in a no op, just to kind of show something, and then we get down to here. We're going to check our index. So we do bank cell K, because we don't know what we did up here. We might have changed the bank, probably did. So we do bank cell K, and then we do, uh, and then we do decrement F, skip on zero, K comma F, or capital F. The capital F is a single bit that tells this instruction to leave, to, at, when it decrements K, to leave the results of that decrementation in K. So decrement K and leave the results at K. So you actually affect the value that we stored there. We stored 20. So the first time through, it's going to decrement it. And now K will be equal 19. Because it's not 0, then we'll have a branch instruction. And we can branch or go to BRA. And we'll do label, label 1. And that takes us back up here. We didn't skip this branch instruction because k wasn't zero. And now we do this 20, when we do it 19 more times, k is going to be zero and we'll skip and we'll go on down with whatever our next instruction happens to be. And, and, so, and, and so that's how that's how that for loop works. Okay. And then if we're gonna if we're gonna just switch, if we want to switch the values of x and y. And again, I, I use x, x, y, y, and z, z simply because z by itself is a uh, is a reserved keyword. It stands for the, the zero bit in the status register, so we really can't use z by itself. So we have to make it z, z. Okay, so so the first thing we do is we we create the variables, create the variables, and again, uh, I may not I may just go ahead and give them to you on the test rather than have you create them. But if you had to create them in a program, you could use a C block. In this case, maybe we'd set our C block at uh, 0, 7, 0, which is going to be in that common RAM that's mapped to every bank. So now we won't have to worry about bank cells. So that'll save us a little work. And then we would just do, then we would just do uh, XX, YY, ZZ, and then NC. And then, so these XX would be 70, 71, and 72. Uh, and these are obviously all hex values. So we should, should precede them by zero uh, X. Okay, so that sets them up. Now we have to put values in there. Same thing we just did for our index. So we would just move MOV literal to W. Let's say for maybe we'll do X first. So maybe we'll load in uh, 0x13, uh, uh, which is confusing. So let me let me do 0x1, uh, uh, 0x, uh, a OK? So that's actually going to be uh, 26. And then, uh, then we're going to MOV W to F. And we'll put XX. We don't have to have second operand there. And then we'll do MOV LW. So maybe we'll put in 2A. So 0X, 2A. Now you have to remember what's your limit here? Your limit is 0 to 255 unsigned and minus 128 to plus 127 signed. And you, as the programmer, have to know which one of these you're thinking about, because obviously the data means something different depending on whether you intended it to be signed or unsigned, but the assembler doesn't know. Uh, these, these, these variables are not typed in assembler. They're simply bits. They're simply a collection of bits, not typed at all. And unlike C where they're typed and the compiler knows what you, what you intend because you typed it as a signed or an unsigned, that's not true in assembler. So you have to keep that, you, you, you become the compiler. 
and you have to remember that. Uh, okay, so so we can't put in 500 or 1,000. Those aren't options, right? We just have eight bits. Okay, and then we do MOV, WF, to, Z, uh, to YY. Y, Y. No second operands required. Okay, so this is this sets us up. And we usually do this in the setup part of the code. And then somewhere in our loop or somewhere in the, in the other part of the program, we want to switch them. So now to switch them, and again, we don't have to do bank cells because we put them in that common RAM up here at, up from 070 to 07F. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're, it's, it, we're, we just have to make sure that we save one of them before we override it. So we'll start with X. So we'll M O uh, M O V F move F X X comma W. And we have to put that second operand in that's a single bit that means take X, don't test it for zero, but actually move it to X, uh, move it to W. So that puts whatever was in X in W. And that means now W has the value of one A hex. So so W is going to equal uh, 0 X 1 A and X X is going to equal 0 X 1 A and Y Y is going to equal uh, 0 X 2 A and Z Z. We don't know because we didn't do anything to it. It's just powered up with a random value. All right. And now we now that we have this in we have this uh, 1 A and W uh, we're going to write it out to Z Z. So we're going to move W to F, ZZ. No second operand required. And now ZZ is going to get 1A, 0X1A. OK, now we're going to load up Y, M-O-V-F-Y-Y. -Y, and we're going to move. And we have to use W here, too. And then we're going to move it into XX. And then we're going to load up ZZ again move F, Z, Z, comma, W. And we're going to move that. And we're going to M, O, V, W, F into uh, Y, Y. So these, these three require second operands. This move F instruction always takes that second operand. So make sure you put it in. OK, and then finally, uh, uh, then we want to pull on a bit. So again, how do we do that? Well, there's all sorts of things. Uh, let's say we want to pull on the uh, go done bit in the ADCON zero register. So, so it turns out if you look at the ADCON zero register, bit seven uh, is not used. And then bits six, five, four, three, and two are our channel number. And then bit uh, one is the go done bit. And then bit zero is the 80 on bit. So we always have to make sure we write a one in that. We don't want to erase that. Uh, and when we want to, we have to put the channel here. When we want to start the conversion, we, we have to write a one here. But the hardware automatically clears it. So what we do is we'll set up the channel. Uh, so let's say we want to do um, uh, AN11. So AN11 would, would just be D. So that would be 10110. OK. And then this will be a 0. And then we'll, we, we cannot write the go down bit at the same time we set the channel. So we have to write a 0. And we have to have this on. So the first thing we'll do is we'll MOV literal to W. And let's see, 0011, 0101. So that's going to be uh, 0x35. Uh, and then we're going to move w to f. Uh, oh, and we have to bank cell. Bank cell uh, ad con 0. And then we'll move this to ad con 0. So now we have, we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 stored in ADCON 0. Now, now we're going to wait just a little bit. So we'll do a couple of no ops. 
maybe three no ups. So that's that at four at a with a with a four megahertz clock. Our F os divided by four equals one microsecond or equals one megahertz. So this so that that means these three three no ops equal three microseconds. Okay. And now we've waited three microseconds. So uh, so our sampling capacitor set to the new channel has had time to charge up to our external signal. And now we can, uh, we can start the conversion. And the first step in the conversion is to disconnect the sampling capacitor from the pin so it won't be changing while we're trying to do the conversion. And so, so what we'll do is we'll bit set F. And since we, we already did 80 con zero here and we haven't changed it, we'll just leave it alone. So we already know that the BSR is set for 80 con zero. So we want to bit set A D C O N zero comma bit zero one bit one. And so we're going to set that bit that starts the conversion. And now we have to wait till that bit is cleared by hardware before we can read the value and go on with our code. So when we want to do that, this is the part where you might have to write the code. And that is we're going to pull on a bit. So We'll call this wait, wait one, that'll be our label. And then we're gonna bit test, uh, bit test F skip. So we wanna skip if it's clear. If it's set, we wanna stay in the loop. So we're gonna skip clear. And in this case then, uh, it's gonna be 80 con zero comma one because we want to check bit one. Remember that's bit zero, this is bit one, that's bit two, three, four, and so forth. So we want to check bit one, not bit two, all right? And so we have to put the three bit value here of which bit we're affecting just like we did here. And then we do the branch BRA wait one. Wait one. And that's just going to go back up here and do this again. And it's just going to keep testing that bit until that bit is cleared. And when it's cleared, it's going to drop through. It's going to skip the branch always instruction. And it's going to continue with our code. And probably what we'd put down here is we would probably we'd probably uh, go ahead and load up. Uh, we would say MO, well, we, we'd bank cell, B-A-N-K-S-E-E-L, uh, A-D-R-E-S-H. And then we'd M O V F uh, A D R E S H comma W, and then we'd store that where we wanted to save that. So we we do a few things like that at the end, uh, but you won't have to do this. But what you do have to know is you do have to know how to write this loop here where we're going to pull in this particular case on the eighty con zero bit bit one the go done bit. Okay, any questions about that? And then uh, the last thing, we want to configure a register here. So we'll do that. So we've done, we did this, we did this, we did this. So we'll do this and th then we'll, we'll be done. So let's say we want to configure that 80 con zero register. Well, we, we already did that actually, now that I think about it. So we'll just go through this. So we wanted to set the channel number. So we, we, we decided we were gonna set channel uh, 11 because if you, look, if you look at our little board, um, if you look at our little board here uh, and you see, notice, notice, that, notice that this these pins here are the analog pins. So ground power, AN6, which is RC2, AN7, which is RC3, and A and 11, which is RB5, those are the three pins. So if we set A and 11, we're, we're gonna take, we're gonna measure the analog voltage of whatever's going in this pin, as long as it's between zero and say five volts, if we're running the board at five, or zero and 3.3 if, if our jumper over here is on 3.3. Uh, so, so when we plug in our little, uh, when we plug in our, our, our analog board here, like this, we plug it in here, then, it turns out that 
that, that the potentiometer is on a n 11, the photoresistor is on a n 7, and the temperature sensor, this thing right here, is on a n 6. There's our pot and there's our photoresistor. So when we turn the pot, uh, we would actually see that changing uh, if we were reading that pin. So that's why we might want to do that. Okay, so, so then so then what we do, so we take that, and, and I always, uh, if we look it up in the data sheet, which actually in this case would probably be a good thing to do. So let's do that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch screens, but I think I have to stop sharing to do that. And I'll share again, and I'll do this screen over here. And then I'm gonna bring up the data sheet, uh, which is right here. Nope, uh, right. No, nope, right here. And so if we go to our uh, A to D converter and our AD con zero, there it is. So I just go ahead and write this out. And here's our channel. So I, I want to go down to AN11. Okay, AN11 is 01, 0, uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. So I put in 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. And then the go down bit cannot be set when I'm setting the channel. So I put a zero in here, but the AD on has to be set. So I put a one in there. So now I have zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one. And that turns out to be 35, I guess. So I think that's what we put in because it's zero, zero, one, one. That's the upper bit. So that's three. And then zero, one, zero, one. So that's five. So it is three five, and uh, three five hex, and so, so I just take that value then, and maybe I'll put the visualizer over here. I just take that value, and I'm gonna. So I have this first bit is uh, unused, so it's a zero. Then I put my zero one one zero one for channel eleven, my zero for the go done bit, and my one. So this is go done. And then my one for the AD on bit. And so that's 35 hex, so 0x35. So then I bank cell AD con zero, move LW into thir move L move literal to W. So 35 goes to W, W goes to F. So now we put 35 hex into AD con zero. So that sets this up just like we want. And then I do no op, no op, no op, wait at three microseconds so that the capacitor charges up. It's a very small capacitor. And then I do the bit set F80 con one and I start the conversion. Then I pull on that bit and then I can read my results. So that's how the ADD, the, the, the ADC works. Now, in a slightly more complicated chip like the KL25Z, you first have to write 40 lines of code to configure your, your A to D converter. And, and then getting it all set up you have to configure probably five, six, seven, eight different registers. Uh, there are some other things you have to do here, actually. But but if you just do what I did, it'll work uh, with the settings we use. You do have to make sure that your uh, eighty. You have to also set up eighty con one, which uh, we didn't look at yet. But just for completeness' sake, maybe we'll do that. Let's see uh, where is it here. Yeah, so if I share my screen again and do this. So uh, that's 80 con zero. If we go down to 80 con one, then you have to do the format left or right justify. Then you have to do the uh, conversion clock select bits. We're gonna, we're gonna use FOS divided by four, so one zero zero. And uh, we're gonna always left justify in assembly language and right justify in C. So in assembly, we're gonna shift everything to the upper register and throw away the lower two bits. So when you only have to deal with the bytes, but in, in C, it'll take care of the 16 bit result for us. So we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and use all six, all, all, well, it's a 10 bit result, but it takes two registers. Uh, and then this one's unimplemented. Our negative reference would just be uh, our ground VSS and our positive reference would just be VDD. So we put in zero and zero, zero. So these are all zeros. So it's zero, 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 zero. And up here we have, uh, in assembly language, we'd have zero, uh, one, zero, zero. So this would be 40 hex. 
to configure this register. And that's all you have to do uh, to uh, use the AD, A to D converter on this chip, which is nice and simple. Um, a real breath of fresh air compared to a more complicated chip. And that's why we do this chip in micro one because it's a little more straightforward. And then uh, you would, it would take, it's quite complicated. I've never tried to write hand code to set up the uh, A to D converter with the KL25Z, but it would, it would take me a week or more. So it's, it's just a lot of, a lot of programming. Okay, any questions? As far as like the programmer's model, are we gonna like, yep. is there any way we would use that for like writing code or anything like that? Or is that just something more to know? Well, you, you need to have it in your head when you're writing code. Um, Cause you need to, you need to, you know, you need to be aware that you have to set the BSR, that you have to use the working register. Um, you, we, we don't have to think too much about the program counter because we're not gonna write a program where we're gonna jump far enough that we can't use the standard instructions. But if you did have to jump a lot farther, then you, you might have to use, you might have to load the PC latch high and then write the PC low and load in the latch in order to get the, ad, get the jump you needed. Um, but uh, because the, uh, the actual branch instructions can only go so far. Uh, if, you, if, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the branch instruction, go down here and look at the instruction set. You look at the uh, uh, at, well. You look at the uh, the branch instructions. Branch always. So you get K is your is your branch offset, and it's two's complement. So you have you have nine bits of two's complement, which means you can go from uh, you can go from minus one twenty eight to plus one twenty seven. So you can only move back and forth a hundred you know plus or minus one hundred and twenty eight or one hundred twenty seven instructions. So if you think about it, that limits. If you have if you have a program that's using all, you know, on this chip we have, uh, I think we have 4K, right? I always have to double check, but let's let me just get that right. Special features, peripheral highlights, analog features, table of contents, uh, device overview. Let's see, uh, no, I guess. Okay, so it has uh, we have um, well uh, here. Here's what I want to see. Yeah, we've got uh, oh, we've got eight K. So yeah, so so you could theoretically jump as far as maybe eight thousand instructions. Well, you can't jump eight thousand instructions. Uh, with an instruction that only has an offset of, of nine bits. So now you, maybe you use the go to. Well, the go to has an offset of, uh, so eight, so four, eight, nine, 10, 11 bits. So how far can we go in 11 bits? Uh, so 10, we can go 1,000 instructions, and 11, we can go 2,000. So we probably can, you know, if we're in the very beginning of the program and we want to go to the end of, a, a, say, to instruction 4096, we're out of luck with, uh, with even the go to instruction. So now we'd have, to use, we'd have to do a special branch or you'd have to jump halfway and then jump again, have a little island set up in the middle where you could land on it and, and have another uh, jump instruction there or go to instruction. But we, we don't actually have enough uh, enough twos comp and remember that's twos complement again so so you can only go plus plus one k minus one k so really even if you went to two k you're kind of in trouble so there is a wraparound feature so it might sort of work out but but pretty much you you couldn't do it with that instruction you'd have to. So, so there are cases where you might have to use the fancy and, you know, where you have to preload the PC latch high and then you have to write the program counter low to get a full 15-bit uh, jump. Uh, but, you know, yeah, that's pretty rare. I mean, I've never done that. 
probably, probably would never need to do that. Okay, any other questions? All righty. So, um, so we'll, we'll do the test on Thursday. Uh, you'll have all day and I, I, it won't take long. You won't take you long to do it. Um, but anyway, is there a lab this week? Uh, yeah, yeah, there is. Yep. Yep. There'll be a lab on Friday. Um, I didn't look to see what it is, but, uh, we, so the, what, the lab we had last week, I'd, I, I'd like to still try and get that one done. Um, so I'd like you to try and do both labs this week because each one, it's kind of important to do them all because they're, they're useful. Um, so yeah, so see if you can get both labs done. And if not, uh, there's, you know, there, we'll have, you know, we'll have, an, you can, you have all the way to April, I forget what the day is in the syllabus, but April 18th or 20th or something, uh, to make up all the labs. So, so you got, there's a fair amount of time to do that. Okay. All righty. With that, I'll, we'll see you then. Uh, we'll sign off.